I did host a Yankee Swap Christmas party. My favorite person to have at a Yankee Swap party yes. is Oscar Nunez. I was going to say Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. Like, I remember one of the gifts was like a fake ponytail Uh huh. that you ended I, up getting. I took that home. Yeah. yeah and I took home Oscar, a fake ponytail. like, started chants like, ponytail, pony. I mean, they're not really <laughs> creative chants, but you'd be surprised how much they catch on. Ho, ho, ho. This is a big episode. It's the Christmas episode. It's the Christmas episode. The very first Christmas episode of The Office. This episode was directed by Charles McDougall. Oh, guys, do we have stories about Charles McDougall? I mean... First of all, he was British. Yes. He's oh, British. Jenna, don't do I'm accent. bringing out the accent, guys. I did my spin bike, and now I'm speaking oh. like a Brit. Oh. As I've already said, it's our very first Christmas episode. Hello, Christmas party. And you guys, the directors that had directed us prior to him were Ken Quapis, who might be the quietest human on the planet. Correct. He says... You know, when he wants to start a scene, he just says, uh, go ahead. And when he gives a note, he'll say, Jenna, um, you know what? No, just go ahead. Yeah. That's Ken Quapis. Yeah. You all heard Paul Feig. Paul Feig is like, hey, hey, gang, how's it going? Hey, we're going to have fun today. Okay, action. Yeah. Charles McDougal rolls in. We're all sitting at our desks. Quietly about to start the first scene. And he goes, wait, brace yourself. Brace, brace yourself. yourself. He brace goes, yourself. Actors. Action! Yes. We, I thought Phyllis peed herself a little. I, I she, tinkled. I tinkled. I, I mean, I, I was terrified. I jumped straight up. He was like, and was we, like, oh we were like, what's gosh. happening? What's happening? Is Tom Cruise busting through the ceiling I, any minute? I'm telling you that first day. The first moment of every scene, we all looked like deer in headlights. We would and then flinch. We would flinch, and then we would go into scene. But then, you guys, we just grew to love this guy. Oh, He would say things like, we'd be working on a scene, and he'd be like, all right, you know, let's go again. Actors, nearly there. <laughs> yes. Nearly there. Um... And then he I, one time he one time said he said, "All right, everyone, that was good for cameras. Actors, better this time." Yeah, <laughs> we're like, "Oh, okay." And then as we'll we try to be better this time, as we got into the episode more and the party started, he would walk up to me and he'd be like, "Angela, remember, you're really pissed. You're really pissed now." And he sort of, and I'm going to get into it. It's on a, it's on like four or five note cards, but he sort of highlighted. The level of, I called it Angela's pissed offness. Yeah. And it, it had like, it was like building to a crescendo. And so towards the end, he would just yell before a big take in the party. He'd be like, all right, everyone happy, Angela pissed and action. Yes. <laughs> I have a ton of facts about the snow. I don't know if anyone else will find it interesting, but I had written all about it. In one of my blogs slash journals. I yes. want to hear all about your snow. All right. I hope this is an anticlimactic for people, but the company that came to make the snow is called Snow Business. I love that. Snow Business. Snow Business. I remembered. I remembered that. It so tickled me. Okay. So here's how it works with fake snow. There's a guy from Snow Business. He shows up. Now, the snow that falls from the sky is different from the ground cover snow. The snow on the ground is snow. The snow that falls from the sky, I know, because it falls on my character at the end, and it is not snow. It's not snow. It's soap. Yes, you can get a choice. You can get a choice of cornstarch, plastic, or soap. And Greg watched a demonstration of all three, and he picked soap. Well, when by accident, a little piece of that might get in your mouth, mm. it tastes like soap. Because I shriek, and a piece of it went in my mouth. That's what yeah. she said. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the ground, though, it's real snow. And they bring this machine, and I don't know exactly how it works, but it's kind of like like a wood chipper, but in it in reverse. It looks like something out of a Dr. Seuss. It book. does. It really does. <laughs> and it really blows snow. 
I guess that's what it looks like. It looks like a snow blower, but it generates snow. And then it just blows it all over the ground, all over the cars and all that stuff. But guys, remember, this is like, we're shooting this in like October in Los Angeles and it's hot in October. It stays warm here. Yeah. In the daytime, it's still in the mid eighties, nineties, but it was night. And so we had a little bit of time with it. I mean, it was still warm out. Yeah, but... it was probably like in the high 60s. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right. But yes, we were very excited to have snow. And Jenna, where... where... Did you like my snow facts? I, I loved... feel a little vulnerable about them now because we set them up so much. I mean, there was like a break and no. I'm in my head about it. I like your snow facts. Snow business. That's cute. I think snow business is really cute. Okay, guys, so now we have the scene where Pam reveals to Jim that she got her teapot back. She trades Dwight the iPod for the teapot, and now she's going to look inside and find all the items. And it's very charming and sweet, and she is so delighted. But in this moment, Jim secretly steals the note back and puts it in his pocket. I know. He lost his courage. He did. Now... When we reached out to fans to ask them what they wanted to know about the Christmas episode, I would say that about 80% of the comments and emails we received were along the lines of what is in the teapot note. Because as you know, in this episode, Pam does not read it. It is not revealed. But then in season nine, there's a scene where Jim has the documentary film crew put together footage of their romance. And he shows it to Pam and Pam sees that there was a note that Jim steals back and then he hands it to her and she reads it. How brilliant is that? And you know who that is? That's Greg Daniels. Yeah. Because he was such a master at beautiful callback moments. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, from the time that Jim stole the note, it drove people crazy. They always wanted to know what had been written in the note. Would Pam ever get the note? For years and years, will he ever give her the note? Around the time of the wedding, people wanted him to give it to her as a wedding gift. Greg saved it till the end. I'm going to say something that I've never said before. I also feel like I'm maybe going to cry. What? Wait. Wait. What? <laughs> are you going to Are you gonna say what was in the note? Are you going to say what was in the note? Sort of. Because I don't know what was on that card. None of us do. I'm the only one who knows and John knows. Oh my gosh, lady. In that episode in season nine, I believe Greg suggested to John that he write a personal message from himself to me. Just saying what our time together on The Office meant to him. Oh, Jenna. Because we were wrapping up filming, we were wrapping up the series, and we were all so emotional at that time, you know? It was all, we were all sort of saying goodbye in different ways. We were. And so that was his goodbye. Very similar to when we filmed that scene with Steve, where I said goodbye to him at the airport, and Paul Feig told me, just run up and say goodbye to your friend Steve. Jeff Blitz said the same thing to me when I was in the car with Oscar. Mm -hmm. And I say, I love Dwight. He said, Angela, in this moment, express your love for the show and everyone. And if you couldn't have it in your life anymore. And I disintegrated. Yeah. So I'm on camera and I open up this note that John's written me. And I just start crying. I just start bawling. It probably, the first take was probably not usable. <laughs> so that's what was in the teapot note, guys. It was a, it was a note from John to me. A personal note uh, about what it meant to work with you on the show. Yeah. Yeah. About our time together on the show. And it was really sweet. Well, that would completely wreck me. It was the sweetest note. And you know, on camera, Pam says, I'll never say what it said, but just know it was perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll never say exactly what John wrote, but I will say just know it was perfect. Aww. 